Welcome to StreamYard's Industry Showcase. This month, we are going to focus on non-governmental organizations. First, where is everyone tuning in from? Let us know in the comments. I'm currently in Kentucky and it's pouring down rain. Hi, hi, hi. Great. My name is Trevor Clifton. I am a live event producer and StreamYard specialist based in Brooklyn, New York. Today, we will be talking to streamers with a cause as we conduct a panel on NGOs that use StreamYard. Live streaming is one of the most effective ways to increase engagement, which is essential for fundraising and spreading awareness. In the showcase series, we hope to produce content specific to your industry so we can learn from the professionals and experts on how to best utilize StreamYard with tools, plans, and strategies. Just like you, we seek to build and strengthen our community via StreamYard live streams. While our speakers come from different walks of life and professional backgrounds, we believe that their insights can be helpful to live streamers, just like you, who want to offer dynamic experiences to their audience and clients. After our panel discussion, you all are welcome to stay behind to network with each other by clicking on the appropriate icons on the left side panel. Our closed captioning service is provided by Aberdeen Broadcasting Services, and you can find the link to a separate window below the video here. Our ASL interpretation support is provided by MT and Associates. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tyler. Our stage chat is to the right on your screen. If you want to focus on the stage content, you can minimize the whole side section by clicking the icon with one vertical line and a small arrow. If you want to participate in live Q&A throughout the event, please add your comments to the stage chat so we can bring them up on screen with Hopin Backstage powered by StreamYard. To adjust the volume, you can change the settings either on your computer speaker or at the bottom left corner of the video viewer. And if we suddenly freeze on screen, refresh your browser and come back again. And now let's move into our panel discussion with Kelsey. Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for the awesome intro, Trevor. Welcome to our StreamYard Industry Showcase, where today we get to dive into all things virtual, specifically with NGO and nonprofits. I'm Kelsey Bentz, StreamYard's head of production. I specialize in the development and execution of virtual and hybrid events using the StreamYard platform. I'll be moderating today's panel discussion, and I am joined today by five incredible panelists from various NGO and nonprofit organizations. Before I welcome them all to the stage, I have some wonderful introductions for our panelists today. So first, I am joined by Kylie Reeves. Kylie manages all digital content and marketing activations for the nonprofit Athletes for Hope and is responsible for leading strategy across the organization's digital ecosystem. Kylie joined AFH in February of 2021 and brings a deep level of passion and unique experience to the position, having served in a variety of media and marketing roles in the sports, healthcare, and nonprofit industries. Let's welcome Kylie to the stage. Hey, Kylie. Hey, Kelsey. Thanks nice so much for joining you. us today. No, of course, excited. Me too. Our next panelist is James Oliver Jr., who is a co-host of the Parents Making Profits podcast and CEO of the Parentpreneur Foundation, which empowers Black parentpreneurs so they can leave a legacy for their beautiful Black children. He's the founder of Kabila, a startup that connects co-founders of tech startups. And he's the author of The More You Hustle and The Luckier You Get, You Can Be a Successful Parentpreneur. Let's welcome James to the stage. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, James. Thanks for being here. Excited to chat with you. All right. Our next panelist is Zachary Morris, who is currently the senior manager of global engagement at Atlas Core, where he coordinates the recruitment and vetting process to find the world's top social change leaders to participate in year-long professional service fellowships in the United States. 
Before joining Atlas Corps, he served as a fellow with Princeton in Latin America, otherwise known as PILA, where he was the volunteer coordinator at the Integrated Childhood and Adolescence Center and the communications assistant at the United Nations World Food Program. As a PILA fellow, he pursued his passion for promoting sustainable solutions that empower communities and strengthen local systems. Zachary is a graduate of American University with a bachelor's degree in international affairs and Spanish and Latin American studies. While at American University, he led an alternative break trip to Mexico City focused on housing justice and grassroots community organizing. Amazing. Let's welcome him to the stage. Hello, happy to be here. Thanks so much for being here. I'm so excited to get into it. Oh my gosh. Okay, two more panelists to welcome to the stage. Next, we're joined by Kate Borisova, who is currently the Senior Manager of Communications at Atlas Core, where she works closely with Zach. She leads digital communication with the international community of 100,000 social change makers from 115 countries. Wow. Before joining Atlas Core, she participated in the Atlas Core Fellowship, which is a professional development program in the United States for the world's social change leaders. Kate is a communications professional with over 12 years of international experience working in the for profit and nonprofit sectors. In 2020, she served as a communications consultant for the Y20 Youth Summit, which is a youth led event that brings young leaders from across G20 countries to discuss and debate the G20 leaders' agenda. That time, Kate led social media promotion of the Y20 community special initiatives, reaching out to 7.5 million young leaders from G20 countries. Kate also serves as a foreign language teacher at the Global Language Network, a DC-based nonprofit organization, and a volunteer translator for several United Nations initiatives. Let's welcome Kate to the stage. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thank you, Katie. Thanks for joining us. Okay, last but certainly not least, we are joined by Colin Teague. Driven by a strong passion to serve youth and promote education reform, Colin has spent the last nine years working in nonprofit organizations that strive to enhance the education of students in American cities. Colin began his career as a sixth grade teacher in Chicago public schools through the Citizen Schools National Teaching Fellowship before moving to virtual exchange-based global education nonprofit Reach the World, otherwise known as RTW. As Senior Program Manager at RTW, Colin spent several years helping K-12 educators integrate technology-based global education programs in classrooms, coordinating thousands of video conferences between young adult travelers abroad and K-12 classrooms in the U.S. Most recently, as Associate Director of Growth and Impact, he's connected thousands of classrooms with explorers and STEM professionals through RTW's Explorer program, which includes the massive Endurance 22 Expedition Education and Outreach program, helping connect hundreds of classrooms worldwide with the expedi Expedition team on live stream events from Antarctica's Weddell Sea. That's amazing. Let's welcome our final panelist, Colin, to the stage. Hey, Colin. Thank you, Kelsey. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. So, just in the introduction, I'm overwhelmed with the range of experience and uh, different specialties that you all bring to the table. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, our chat today. Uh, let's take that logo down so it's not covering Kylie's face. <laughs> all right. So let's jump right in with, with maybe a fun fact to start. All right. What is your most memorable live show or event? Kylie, let's start with you. Sure. Um, honestly, I think the, the our, my most memorable is probably our first one. Um, it was um, back in February, actually, of this year. We did um, a series with some of the HBCU student athletes that we work with um, at Athletes for Hope. And um, it was moderated by uh, Etan Thomas, who's a, an NBA veteran. And it was just the best conversation. Um, and we we'll, can get a little bit more into um, sort of our strategy and like how we, you know, elevate athlete voices um, yeah. at Athletes for Hope, but just the ease in which, you know, we were able to schedule it and produce it and the way that we were able to use the content that Streamer had captured. Um, it was really awesome. So, so definitely that event for sure. That's great. I look forward to hearing more about that. Mm -hmm. James, let's go to you. What was your most memorable live virtual event? Yeah, so it was this past uh, Giving Tuesday, which I believe is in November. We did a live event and we had David Cohen, who's Techstars co-founder and chairman. For those who don't know, Techstars is 
arguably the uh, preeminent global startup accelerator. He was on the live and we were doing it to raise money for Giving Tuesday. And he announced uh, on the live that he would be matching do all donations of a thousand dollars for the first thousand dollars. And that actually helped us raise money for our foundation. So that was really awesome. That's amazing. Did you know that that was coming or did he surprise everyone? I had no idea. Oh, that's so <laughs> awesome. That's very, very cool. I think yes. it's really special in virtual events when there is an element of surprise because it can feel, you know, you, we're all sitting in our living rooms or whatever, and it can feel a little, a little stale. So I love when things like that happen. That's amazing. Kate, let's go to you. Most memorable live event. Uh, so that was last year, the first virtual summit for American Express Leadership Academy, which Atlas Core organized like for the past, uh, I don't know, five years. But it was the first virtual event and we went live to the American Express Facebook page with 8 million oh followers. And it was very, very stressful for me just because <laughs> I was the person, like tech person, who brings speakers on the screen, put banners, videos. Yes. That was the most memorable. That is amazing. And how did it go? It, it went amazing. And that's why this year we did the hybrid uh, summit in person and virtual because we decided that virtual was so great. So we need to continue it. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's wonderful. Colin, how about you? Yeah, so uh, March 9th of this year, uh, Reach the World hosted the first live stream event broadcasting the discovery of Sir Ernest Shackleton's shipwreck endurance, which was found at the bottom of the Weddell Sea, 10,000 feet at the bottom. And so we hosted the head of marine archaeology as well as the head of marine robotics, who were the two leaders on the expedition in finding the shipwreck. Um, we had an audience of thousands of schools watching and we also had you know just a large general audience which led to us being quoted in the new york times article and was just incredible in elevating the the educational program that was part of this expedition that's insane that's so amazing and were they were your two speakers like in Antarctica when you were, doing were yes they were um they were on board the SA Agullis 2 which is an icebreaker vessel that they use to get into the Weddell Sea and break through sea ice in order to um then they used underwater robots to to then locate the wreck and they had internet connection yes which um actually okay. it was um if you watch you can watch the live stream on YouTube if you watch it, it was the connection was a bit shaky at times. Sure. But thanks to StreamYard, we were able to kind of cover that up with some cool graphics. And then, you know, to a degree, it was also part of the experience that we were showing just how incredibly remote this part of the world was. Um, but they did have satellite connection from aboard the ship. Oh, my gosh. That just gave me chills. That is, you know, the power of live streaming and the power of StreamYard. It, it can connect you from literally wherever you are. That's amazing. All right, Zach, let's go to you. Yeah, um, so we often use StreamYard to do live streams uh, to promote our fellowship and to have, um, you know, different alumni speak about our experiences uh, with the fellowship. So we had, uh, you know, people call in from five different continents, not Antarctica, <laughs> um, you know, to, to talk about their experiences. And that was great. We had representation from so many different countries. That's wonderful. And where was that streamed to? Where was your audience? Yeah, it was streamed across our social media platform. Oh, wonderful. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. What a, what a great way to start us off. All right, so let's jump in a little more to, you know, StreamYard specific use for all of you. So I'm really curious on how did you all find StreamYard? Who wants to go first? Colin, let's go to you. How'd you find StreamYard? Um, yeah, so uh, Reach the World, we started out very focused on one-to-one -one virtual exchanges, connecting single classrooms with travelers who were either, you know, either STEM professionals or explorers in other remote parts of the world. Or also we connected a lot with students who were doing research or studying abroad in other countries mm. as a means to share the world with students, especially in low-income under-resourced classrooms. 
so that they could experience the benefits of travel um, themselves from just from their classroom. As we evolved, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw the need for, um, for classrooms to engage in experiences with that, that were really accessible, really easy for them to just join um, along with side other classrooms. And we started having live stream events that were uh, especially focused on, like I mentioned before, these um, STEM professionals and explorers who are on scientific expeditions and doing research around the world. So we, uh, we really wanted to find a platform that was easy to help us connect with many different classrooms at once and even to bring those classrooms live on screen and show their participation. Yeah. And we have a partner and I, I'd love to shout them out Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. They're a, an organization based in Canada. They have been doing something very similar for a long time and are big users of StreamYard. And yeah, we they recommended it to us and we've had a great experience ever since. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. So when, when was your first StreamYard uh, live stream broadcast? So yeah, we really adopted StreamYard. We started out streaming directly from Zoom. Yeah. which uh, which worked, but it was very complicated to set up and sure. kind of just had a lot of possibilities for little things to go wrong. Um, so we started doing that this year during the Endurance 22 expedition when okay. we really needed the ability to host a high volume of classrooms very easily with little barrier for participation. Yeah, the, that, that really highlights the ease of use, I think, of the StreamYard platform. Like there's a lot of... Um, different things it's it is capable of but at the at the heart and at the root of the platform it's always been really easy to use and continues to be easy to use that's something that's always so relieving for me because famously I'm not that tech savvy <laughs> I have a lot of skills but like learning platforms is hard and sometimes they they are just very cumbersome so I definitely understand where you're coming from with that Kylie uh, how did you find StreamYard with uh, Athletes yeah. for Hope? Yeah, so we actually, um, we partnered with a few PBS stations across the country um, when they were promoting their Muhammad Ali documentary that uh, Ken mm -hmm. Burns did. Um, so Muhammad Ali is one of our founders, um, one of our founding athletes um, back in 2006. And um, so they reached out to us to help sort of part of their their um, local community outreach projects. Um, and so we are actually a guest on the Maryland Public Television's um, event that they did to talk about Muhammad Ali's legacy, how Athletes for Hope is, you know, carrying that on and giving back to communities all over the country. Um, and I, I wasn't on the panel. Our CEO, Jason Belinke, led it with a few athletes from the district track club and their professional running group. Um, in the district in DMV area. Um, and um, I helped, you know, set it up, produce it, all that good stuff. And it was just yeah. sort of what you were just talking about. It was so easy to use. And um, I loved it. And I said, we got to use this too. Um, so we've, we've started using it um, for a lot of our athlete to athlete conversations and, um, you know, being able, we use the pre recorded um, feature most yeah. often. Uh, which has been so incredible. Just, you know, the athletes that we work with are available at all hours of the day. Um, and sometimes those windows are so short. So being able to have that flexibility on recording when we can and then sharing it out, um, you know, when it makes the most sense to is really helpful. So yeah, um, totally. Yeah. And I guess that gives that gives the athletes an opportunity to maybe feel a little less pressure. Like, totally. I know sometimes doing a live event, and you're like, Oh, God, like, you yeah. can't, you can't go yeah. back. <laughs> I, always, yeah, I always give the disclaimer that we can edit it if we need to. So, yes, and exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. There is yeah. a beauty in in the the live element where mm -hmm. it's like anything goes and you just have yeah. to keep going. But I also definitely understand um, the desire for just a more casual laid back environment where, you know, if like you say something wrong or you want to yeah. embellish on something, you have the opportunity to do that and then edit it later. Yeah. For sure. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Kate, let's jump to you. How did you and Atlas Core find StreamYard? So it was uh, almost two years ago, we launched a special initiative in Indonesia together in partnership with U.S. Embassy Indonesia. And that time, uh, the embassy and their organization at America were in charge of making live stream so when we participated in this live stream we saw that they use videos banners and that was so amazing so we decided we need that 
<laughs> and we start to search for um, uh, like opportunities and we found StreamYard. That time we also use Hopin for our internal Atlas Core uh, conferences awesome. and uh, we can, we could uh, connect StreamYard not only to social media but to Hopin. That's why we chose it. We chose it. That's wonderful. Yeah, and and this event is is being hosted in StreamYard, but the attendees are all watching on Hopin, so it's that same same exact experience. That's awesome to hear. Thanks for sharing that, James. I'm curious, how did you find StreamYard? Yeah, it was from a couple years ago. Uh, a mutual acquaintance or an acquaintance, I'm sorry. I, I saw him posting about it and I was like, oh, what's this? This is interesting. And I went to an event that he was using it. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then I launched a foundation, the Parentpreneur Foundation in 2020. And I got access to LinkedIn Live. And yeah. I started doing events on LinkedIn Live uh, for the members of my foundation, but also to amplify what we're doing beyond just the foundation community. And I love that, like you said, it's super easy to use and that I could go live on multiple platforms. So when we go live, we'll stream on Twitter and sometimes Twitch and or inside the Facebook group um, for the foundation. Yeah. And then you also have a podcast. Do you use StreamYard to do the podcast and then export the audio? We, we do not do that currently. Got it. Got it. But that's a possibility to ease your workflow. You can just download that MP3. Uh, we, do audio. That. we do that for sure. Just it's to so sneak awesome. in that in there. Right on, right on. I see, I see what you're doing there. I like it. <laughs> Amazing. And Zach, um, tell us, is I know you, you and Kate work together at Atlas Core. Um, so is your journey to finding StreamYard similar to hers or, or do you have a something else to add? Uh, found it all through Kate. So amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. And thankfully happy to <laughs> discover it. That's wonderful. So do the two of you then at Atlas Core work together to, to help produce the virtual events? Is that how, how it works? Yeah. Kate is all behind the scenes on the stream yards, nice. making sure I don't mess up <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, navigating the, uh, bringing people on screen. It's very helpful. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it's nice because, you know, you have that ability to have multiple hosts in the background. So like right now in this event, we have like multiple people who have host access to help like facilitate the production. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's great. I also can say that half of our team can use StreamYard from CEO to interns uh, because it's so easy. So you actually do not need a person backstage if it's not something complicated with a lot of speakers, videos and banners. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I know a lot of times, you know, people in higher up in companies, they're so busy and they are used to certain platforms. Maybe they have like a single meeting platform that they always use. And then when they hear like, oh, I have to join a new platform, like they don't want to do that. They just feel, and, and you know, I understand like they're so overloaded. They do not have time to learn new platforms. But with StreamYard, you know, you just click the link and you come in and that's all you have to do. You make sure your camera and your mic works and, and you're off running. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to hear like everyone from your org feels capable uh, to, to utilize the platform. That's awesome. Okay, so I really wanna jump in um, a little bit deeper into how each of you use StreamYard. I know that, you know, a little bit in the in our fun fact at the, at the intro, we heard a little bit from everyone, but I, I wanna hear more specifically uh, how you all use the platform and uh, maybe most, cause I know there's a, there's a, how you use it most, A, and then, um, be like what your favorite feature of StreamYard is. Who wants to go first? I can go. I, I think it's it's kind of a rehash of what I said a few moments ago. Yeah. And I, I use it to, you know, we have various speakers and bring, give my community access to interesting people and new resources. And you know, sometimes we don't want to just leave that for the community, but we also want to give, the people who taken their time to share with us a bigger platform. So I like that we can do that in, um, internally as well as externally across various um, platforms, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that's how I use it. And, you know, for those people who can't make it in the community, then it's great to be able to download the replay and just totally. post it inside my community. So that's really helpful. So you both go live and then you also download the, 
the replay and post it elsewhere as well? In, inside my community, my foundation community. Got it. Got and it. I, you know, also I'll take some of the, sometimes I'll take, make clips of the video and, and share that as yes. social media content. Yeah. Which helps drive awareness around what we're doing. That's super smart. Um, the repurposing of the content is so well, smart. Well, you, you got to repurpose content. You have right? to. If, if oh, you're not God. doing that, you're kind of asleep at the switch, I think. <laughs> Calling it like it is. And I, I love that. And I agree, especially because, you know, there are certain very popular social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok, for example, where they don't, they have policies against third party live streaming companies. So StreamYard can't actually stream live to either of those platforms. We get asked that all the time. Like, can, can I live stream to Instagram? And unfortunately not yet. So that repurposing um, idea that you brought up is, is so vital in order to reach your audience that, that is on those platforms most, you know, cause everyone has a certain platform that they are drawn to um, so reaching your Instagram community, your TikTok community, whatever that might be, the repurposing really comes in handy for that. I love to hear it. Riley, what about you? Can you dive in a little bit more? I, I know you kind of, you me mentioned it before, but I'd love to hear more. Yeah, for sure. And that's actually, it's a good segue because we, I think the, the biggest sort of learning I've had over the past month for sure, because we've, we've used StreamYard a lot for our mental health awareness month activations, mm. um, has been the, the ease in which we can repurpose the content from our, you know, the, the full 40 minute conversation that we'll have about a specific mental health topic with our athletes. We'll take clips and then we'll put that on um, all sort, you know, our, all of our social media platforms. So if you yeah. go to, you know, any platform at athletes for hope and you'll see, you know, our links to our full, the full conversation, you'll see links to, or you'll see videos of clips. Um, and we're also, we're able to integrate Canva too. Um, to just use the footage from our StreamYard conversation um, mm -hmm. and then just drop it right in um, into 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 Canva. So we get sort of that extra, that added branding um, as well. Um, and I think too, just, and I'll continue the plug that you were making earlier with the, the podcast is we download the audio and it's just, it's as easy. So we use Anchor um, and mm -hmm. it's as easy as uploading that audio file. Um, and then publishing that just as a different way to reach people who may consume content in a different way than other than video. Um, Cause it's one thing to watch, you know, two athletes who you might know by face on a video, um, which is awesome. And people who do that, you know, it, it might not be the same people who listen to it on a podcast or want to do it, listen to it in the car. So it's, cool. uh, it's, it's been really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that's such a great point. And it, it brings to mind the concept of just furthered inclusivity. Like mm -hmm. I think with nonprofits, I always think like they seem very inclusive, like as a general kind of concept, like nonprofits yeah. to me seem accessible and inclusive. And so those two concepts and ideas um, should be mirrored in, in the content that is going out. And so I love the, to hear, you know, you're using the audio to go to anchor and you're, you're on all these different platforms, repurposing your content in different ways. And same with you, James, to like reach everyone and in, in whatever capacity that they want to consume content. in. um, it's very inclusive. And, and, um, I just, I love to hear that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Colin, uh, tell me, tell me a little more about how you use StreamYard. I want to hear more about the, the shipwreck discovery and like how that all worked. Yeah, so Reach the World has broadcast 31 total live streams as part of the Endurance 22 expedition. Amazing. Um, and we've also had many others. Currently, we have an ongoing live expedition with a biologist in Columbia's dry forest ecosystem, which is really cool. Yeah. And the, the best part of StreamYard for us, well, actually, there's really two things I want to talk about. The first is the use of media. Reach the World's audience, intended audience, is K-12 students. And so the use of educational media to supplement our guests, our featured guests' presentations is really important. Mm -hmm. It really helps illustrate what they're teaching our students and helps keep our students engaged. Yeah. And it also, like I mentioned before, it helps bridge the gap when we do have a little bit of a shaky connection, connecting to some of these scientists and explorers who are in really remote places like... Antarctica is what I'll see. And the other thing is the ability to integrate uh, the YouTube chat and also the ability to easily have classrooms join us live on camera. Mm -hmm. So we really want 
to show the engagement of our audience and to make it really easy for students to ask questions to our featured guests. So every single one of our live streams, we invite classrooms live on camera to participate. We also have a very high level of participation from the YouTube chat, which is really easy to integrate into our stream by just hovering over their questions. And that makes it really easy for our featured guests to just answer the questions in real time. And then I, I also want to piggyback on what everyone else has talked about, which is the ability to use the recording after the fact. So uh, our, our primary streaming destination is always Reach the World's YouTube channel. Nice. And so we record everything and post it after the fact on our YouTube channel. And well, we're actually streaming live and then we keep the recording on our YouTube mm -hmm. channel. And then we also bring that recording over to our content page. So reachtheworld.org. And we have all of our different expeditions and journeys there and our live events are posted as what we call video or photo albums. And so for the classrooms who aren't able to join us live, um, they, can, they can participate in that asynchronously as well. That's wonderful. So you're creating a bit of an on-demand library on Reach the World's website then. Exactly. Yes. Are you using the, the embed feature for the recordings? Is that how you're putting it on there? Or, or do you stream directly to the um, website? So we embed it from, we stream directly to YouTube and then we embed the recording from YouTube to our website. Perfect, nice, that's awesome. And um, for those of you watching, there's also another way to, it was recently released feature where you can actually embed the recording straight from StreamYard. We give you like a little embed code um, that you can you can throw that that sucker wherever you want on your website, uh, wherever wherever we'll take that code. Um, but that's, that's very cool, Colin. And going back to what you said about um, the YouTube chat and the engagement, do you find that, you know, showing comments on screen actually boosts the engagement uh, in your in your live streams? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think that people really want to participate when they see their questions coming up on screen. Yeah. And like I said before, it also makes it just more of a seamless process for our featured guests to answer those questions. Yes. You don't have to relay them through our moderator. It's um, it's just a much better, much more engaging experience overall. Yeah, going back to that ease of use, Darlene says, great idea. Hey, Darlene, thanks for joining. That ease of use concept, right? Like for your guests and the moderators joining StreamYard, you wanna make it as seamless uh, and as least amount of work for them as possible, right? So being able to just bring those comments right in front of their face, like they don't have to look anywhere, they don't have to click anywhere, like you're, you, you and your team take on that load for them. And I, I bet that that makes their experience a, a bit smoother. Definitely. All right, Kate and Zach, I want to hear from you. Tell me more about your live streams and, and the ways in which you use StreamYard in unique ways. Zach, do you want to go? <laughs> you can go first, yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I completely agree with what Colin said, with um, showing comments and see all comments in one place, especially because usually we stream, for example, to Hop in YouTube and Facebook, and we do not need a person who will go through all this platform to collect questions. We just see it there and we can show it on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I really love it because it makes our work much easier. Uh, and also what I love about StreamYard, because as Zach said, we have alumni uh, who participate in our lives from all over the world and also from places and countries where you didn't have stable internet or it's very complicated if you need firstly to um, install some apps. Uh, so StreamYard makes it much easier and makes uh, it um, affordable for people from all over the world. And it's not going to you. <laughs> yeah, so we use uh, StreamYard for so many different uh, aspects of our work. We do it to promote different programs that we have. So our virtual leadership institute, our, our launch calls, uh, where we have speakers um, from the social impact space um, speak. We use it to do recruitment. So whenever we want to promote our fellowship and get people to apply, we go to StreamYard and do it that way. And then even for private um, private uh, recordings or private YouTube lives, um, where we, we don't really want to promote to the public, but to a smaller population of people, we use it for that too. 
Amazing. Uh, yeah, there are many great uses for it. Yeah, it, there's so much. There's clearly for all of you so much thought put into into your virtual content and and what you're creating. So I'm interested. I want to move the conversation a little bit more into the planning and the strategy uh, elements of it. So I really want to know how do you all make content and distribution decisions within your orgs? Kylie, let's jump to you. Sure. Um, so I think one of the, um, I don't know if tricky is the right word, but so, so at Athletes for Hope, we, we work with athletes. We educate athletes on their ability to give back and make a difference in their communities. And then we help athletes of any level um, figure out what causes they care most about. So we, we, we call it cause-gnostic. So unlike a lot of nonprofits and NGOs, we are not focused on one specific cause, which is great in some areas and not so great in others. And sure. the, the latter being the how do you decide what to post and, and what to talk about. So we really rely on, um, you know, sort of the different milestones throughout the year. So I mentioned Mental Health Month um, a little bit earlier, but this month we've we've been all about talking about athlete mental health, mental health in just in the general space and youth mental health, um, and focusing on um, you know using uh, elevating athlete voices um, to be able to talk about those specific causes. Um, mm -hmm. We did the same back in February for Black History Month, and I mentioned um, the panels that we did with the HBCU students uh, or student athletes, and we'll definitely look to do that more throughout the year. Um, uh, just, you know, depending on the different milestones and sort of like what what the athlete and what the sports community and really just not even just the sports community, just what everybody is is focused on. So that's really what we're focused on right now in terms of making sure that we can elevate athlete voices to talk about the causes that they want to care about. Um, and and yeah, it's been really it's been really great so far. So you if I'm understanding correctly, you kind of customize the outreach based on each athlete's sort of what they want and how they want to give back. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For the most part. Um, cool. And I think too, like, you know, we'll, and this is really for any cause, like we're doing a lot of our content right now for, for May is obviously mental health heavy. That right. doesn't mean that we're not going to do, you know, mental health conversations throughout the rest of the year. We have a program, sure. um, you know, that's, that focuses specifically um, on that cause. Um, so, you know, it's sort of like our, our kickoff point in terms of talking about, you know, this specific cause and like continuing those conversations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really just about like what the athletes that we work with are most um, eager to talk about. Very, very cool. Yeah, I like I like that kind of specificity in, in, in personalizing it for each athlete and, and what how they want to give back. That's, that's yeah. really awesome. And, and I think what StreamYard too allows us to do, and I mentioned with the um, you know, the, the ability to the pre-recorded asset or the wow. pre-recorded aspect um, is, you know, we can connect athletes from different sports, different levels. We had a Notre, Notre Dame rower talk to an assistant coach for Gotham FC and the NWSL, Amazing. like where are they ever going to meet or talk about, you know, the so importance true. of life after sports and mental health. So um, that's been a really cool aspect for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I'm glad you said that too, because I think the concept of virtual, especially at the beginning of 2020, where everyone was forced to go virtual, felt very mm -hmm. isolating. Um, but I think at this point in a lot of us are seeing the really connecting benefits of virtual, where it's like people who would never otherwise cross each other's paths are mm -hmm. able to have conversations and make relationships and um, kind of like form bonds and connect to each other's audiences as well and kind of like grow their network. Um, Dana says, I love that it's focused on each athlete. Yeah, me too. That's so, so cool. Thanks for sharing that, Kylie. So James, I want to go to you because, um, you know, you create a lot of different content. You know, you're an author, you're a CEO, you're, uh, you, you created a startup to connect um, co-founders, if I'm remembering mm -hmm. that correctly. So there's a lot of, you have a lot of different uh, reach. So I want to, I want to know how do you make content and distribution decisions within, you know, all of your organizations that where you're making virtual content? Yeah. First, I love Kylie, what you were saying about mental health. Um, one of the things that we do at the Parapreneur Foundation that I'm most thankful for is we have paid for 320 mental therapy sessions for the members of our Parentpreneur Foundation community. Wonderful. And this is huge because, you know, in the black community, mental health tends to be st uh, stigmatized mm -hmm. and we're shattering 
those negative stereotypes uh, for the members in our community, which ultimately lets us, you know, leave a legacy of mental health and, and mental wealth. And, you know, and I like to say mental health is health. Yeah. So to answer your question, a big part of what we do is, you know, we show receipts, you know, what impact are we having? We're not just, when I post things about the work we're doing, it's not just, oh, look at me, look at me. It's like, no, look at the impact we're having. Look at these people in our community. Look how amazing they are and the impact that they're having right. and how they're showing up differently and uh, more holistically as a result of the work that we're doing. So that's a lot of what I what I do in terms of the foundation. Mm. You know, in terms of um, the other platforms, my other businesses, you know, the, the podcast is, you know, we're promoting the podcast, right? But it's always in the context of, so for my podcast, Parent the Parents Making Profits podcast, we're in the HubSpot Podcast Network. And that podcast exists to help parents who are entrepreneurs be better parents and entrepreneurs. Mm. So in our podcast episodes, everyone is very specific about here are things you can do to be a better parent and entrepreneur. So it's like from the very beginning of those episodes, we jump right into it. There's not a lot of navel gazing, a lot of chit chat. Sure. People are busy. They don't have time. Like, why am I listening to your podcast? Like, get right to the point. Yeah. So, so that's what we do there. So, but in general, with respect to the, the foundation, it's all about impact, you know? And, right. you know, one thing, people don't think that people are watching because, mm. uh, but people are always watching, even if they're not engaging with your content. Yes. People are watching. So, you know, you'll be very surprised if you do a StreamYard video and uh, event and then you take that video content you repurpose it or you you chop it up into bite-sized bits and you share that stuff on social media like if you consistently do that and you show up and you have an you're showing the impact of your work yeah uh, good things will happen i promise you i love what you brought up about being aware of your audience because that is so important when making content and thinking about the impact specifically since that's such a priority for for you as you mentioned it but i think all of us making virtual content want to make an impact like i think that's the overall goal right on our on our various audiences but in order to do that you have to keep your audience in mind and kind of um not necessarily be so affected by what other people think that you're not creating genuine content. That's not what I mean, but I think um, having the audience's experience in mind and like thinking about where they're coming from. Like when you mentioned your, your podcast, like you just get right into it because you're talking to entrepreneurs, you're talking to parents and those two things create like zero free time. Do you know what I mean? They like, don't have time for the foolishness, right? Just exactly. Get right to the, I don't, yeah. I mean, I have ADHD. I'm not going to sit around and listen to a bunch of nonsense, like get right to it. Right. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, it all starts with a really compelling why that book, Simon Sinek's book, starting with why, you know, what's the reason you're doing the work you're doing? What's your purpose? Like under starting with that, because if you don't have a compelling why, look, there's so much stuff run, floating around on social mm. media. It's super hard to get people's attention, right? Yeah. But if you figure out who you're fighting for, as my co-host Mario Armstrong likes to say on the podcast, like, who are you fighting for? Like, what's your big purpose? What is your why? And you focus on those people. And then, so, you know, we have a great relationship with Seth Godin, you know, nice. the marketing genius and guru uh, with my foundation. And he, one of the things he talks about that I love when he came to talk to us a couple of times, he talks about the minimum viable audience. Mm -hmm. I know there's this tendency, you want to try to be all things to all people, but when you do that, you end up being nothing to no one. So, right. you know, right. you start with your minimum viable audience. If it's like 10 people, 50 people, if those are your hardcore people who care about the work you're doing, like start with those people and stop showing up, trying to get attention because there's a lot of that going on. Right. People just trying to get attention. Stop trying to get attention and get your customers or users to tell 10, 10 of their friends about their business. So the 10 people would be your minimum viable audience and get them to tell their friends about what you're doing and stop trying to get attention. I love that. Straight to the point. Very effective. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are, we're going to move into audience Q and A in just a moment here, but I do want to hear from Colin and, and Zach and Kate. Um, so Colin, tell me a little bit about how reach the world um, you know, makes those content and distribution decisions specifically, you know, with working with K through 12s and, and all of the challenges that that might bring. Yeah. So I, it kind of goes with what James just said about minimum viable audience for us. It's mm -hmm. K-12 students and teachers were following Reach the World's expeditions. And 
So everything for us is really based on the interests of those students and, and the, the classroom curriculum for the classes that are following along. Right. And so we really try to um, take the example of the Endurance 22 expedition. The primary focus of that expedition was to find Sir Ernest Shackleton's shipwreck, but w there's a lot of other things going on. And we really try to use everything that's going on and the expedition to help teachers make their curriculum more engaging and to help students become more interested. So we have, you know, we have live stream events about Antarctic wildlife that everyone's seeing from the deck of the ship. We have live streams about the robotics and engineering that's going on. Um, we have live streams about social emotional learning and the perseverance and teamwork that it takes to accomplish your goals in such mm -hmm. a incredibly remote environment and a harsh, such a harsh climate. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that, that curricular angle is super important and students' interests as well. And then the other thing is that Reach the World really wants to expose the students that we're reaching to careers in exploration. Mm. And that doesn't just mean the archaeologists and the engineers who are working on underwater robots. It also means there's a chef on board the ship who's cooking for over a hundred people yeah. three times a day. There's engineers who are deep down in the engine room of the SA goes to icebreaker who are making sure that that ship runs smoothly. Um, there's, you know, there's a pilot who's navigating through ice. There are so many different interesting professionals on board the ship that are not only helping make this incredible discovery uh, of of endurance lying 10,000 feet under the ocean, but also people who are just working to keep everybody safe and fed. Yeah. And those are incredibly important careers. And for, for students who are interested in exploration, there's something out there for all of them. That is so cool. And that both uh, speaks to the inclusivity point from earlier, but also like the educational part of, of opening people's minds to what they might not have even thought about. Like if I, I know just hearing you talk right now, when I think explorer, I think literally the person doing the exploring. And if I'm not interested in that, then I'm like, okay, well, that couldn't be me, but it's cool. But what you're saying is like, you are opening kids eyes to like, no, there's so many different positions that surround this where like, if this is interesting to you, but you you might not like be the person at the depths of the sea. Like there's so many opportunities for you to, um, for your talents to shine. And I think that's, that's so awesome and, and really helps um, kids feel capable and feel like there's exciting adventures for them up ahead. Yeah, and exploration, I mean, to be frank, exploration hasn't traditionally been the most diverse field out there. Sure. That's something that we're really hoping to change by connecting students with the professionals who are on these expeditions and the, the, the amazing things that they're all doing. Wonderful. All right, Kate and, Kate and Zach, I want to hear from you briefly, and then we're going to move into Q&A. Uh, so... Um... I couldn't be more agree with us speakers, but uh, also our audience, like 1% of our audience is located in the US so we can gather them in person. So we do lives all the time. For 15 years, Atlas Core exists. We do lives all the time. But now with StreamYard, I think we start to do it even more frequently. Like, like I, I remember last year, I even said like, okay, guys, let's do not more than one live a, a week because like <laughs> three lives a week, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that like ties right into our question of Trevor says, how often do you all create live content? So it sounds like more than you expected. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for sure we do it once a month, maybe two times a month. That's what we, st we tried to do like this year, because last year, I swear there were a few weeks where we had like three lives in a week because oh it was gosh. different lives for different audience. But it was just every second day we had like a live stream. Oh my gosh, I've been there and it is stressful, but fun to have so many live events going. Um, I want to hear from everyone else too. How often do you all, do you all go live? Okay, um, uh, ladies first. Uh... <laughs> Kylie, go ahead. I was going to say, we, we mostly use the pre pre-recorded option. So going mm -hmm. live at this point, not too often. Um, How often but... are you doing recordings? Um, about once a, on average, once a week. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah nice. Sometimes stack them 
so we had like three in the beginning of May, but yeah. Amazing. James, how often are you creating live content? So once to twice a month. Okay. Um, so when I do it, uh, I have a, a producer, uh, a person in my community who has a uh, her, says chosen media productions and I have her just produce the event for me so I can focus on talking to my guests because if you know I'm trying to navigate between getting comments up and responding to questions and oh it's a little harder so just simply for ease of use uh, I have a, um, a producer to do that and you know we pay her she's a member of my foundation community so it's great to be able to engage her nice. and to pay her and I love that some of these guests that we have on our show are actually amazing connections for her mm. and you know because access to people in these relationships it matters a lot and you know social yeah. capital is super important Right. Particularly with respect to black entrepreneurs, we talk a lot about the dearth of financial capital for, you know, black and, you know, minority and BIPOC founders. But really, I think the lack of social, social capital is as much of a problem. Yeah. So, but to answer your question, though, no, it's about once, maybe twice a month. Awesome. And Darlene uh, from our audience has a question Where do you stream to? James, I know you shared you stream most often to Twitter, correct? And then Twitch as well sometimes? Well, LinkedIn Live is my primary because, you know, okay. LinkedIn and Twitter are the two places I'm most active on social media. Got it. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes on Twitch, but I'm not really on Twitch. You know, okay. I'm not even on Facebook. Like I deleted the Facebook app off my phone, so I'm not even really. And for my community, you know, we have a community of 1900 parentpreneurs and we're on a platform called Mighty Networks. I don't know, don't know if you're familiar with that. Okay. So I don't even use Facebook personally or for our community. Um, so I'm not really on Facebook so much. Got it. So you're streaming live to LinkedIn, Twitter, sometimes Twitch, and then you're also just posting your content on like your sites and your, your community. Yeah, we have a blog inside the community. Nice. We put the replays there. Exactly. And I'll, you know, I'll chop up the, the video and like I did a video yesterday inside my, my new startup, we had a great venture capitalist and um, she, she does pre-seed pre and early stage venture funding. And afterwards, I just chopped up the videos and I just started sharing those on social media, which is, awesome. uh, again, we got to repurpose that content. Yeah, exactly. All right. We're running low on time, um, but I do, I want to know what everyone's upcoming and exciting projects are before we, we move into our giveaway. So um, can, can everyone share what they're, what they're working on or what's upcoming? Colin, let's start with you. Yeah. So uh, our most recent expedition is um, it's called Lee's Expedition to Columbia. And so, as I mentioned, we have a Biologist specifically, she's focused on insects, and yeah. she is connecting with Reach the World's community of classrooms to teach them about insects in Colombia's dry forest. Amazing. And she also happens to be in a town called Barichata, which is the the inspiration for Encanto. So, oh, um, that's so that's cool! Been exciting for some of the classrooms who are following along. I bet. And then this summer, we are also. Um, we're going to be streaming live and covering a an expedition that's doing um, underwater drilling. So if they're taking drill samples from the mid-ocean ridge, from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, on board a research vessel called the Joides Resolution. Um, and so that's just, yeah, that's a geological research expedition that students are going to be able to follow. Um, we work a lot with summer programs, especially here in New York City. Um, and some of them will have the opportunity to follow along with that expedition. That's fantastic. So everyone go check out Reach the World. Is it reachtheworld.org? Yes, for there's reachtheworld.org. And then specifically for Endurance 22, there's a lot that can be found on just, um, there's another site called explore.reachtheworld.org. And then oh. our YouTube channel as well is where a lot of this content can be found. Fabulous. Thanks. Kate and Zach, um, tell us what, what's upcoming, what's exciting, where can we find you? Uh, so July 16th, our traditional summer celebration. We do celebration twice a year when we celebrate our community. So if you want to see our fellows, alumni, fellows who finished their fellowship, fellows who just started their fellowship, uh, our volunteers um, and partners, so please join us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, it's atlascore.org or uh, at atlascore, it's our handle on all social media. And you can see all our 
um, community unites and go live via StreamYard. Fabulous. Everyone go check out atlascore.org. All right, Kylie, what's upcoming? Where can we find you? Yeah, uh, well, you can find us on all social media platforms at Athletes for Hope. Um, and we have, so we're actually posting our very last mental health stream content, et cetera, all that today. Um, so and you can see all of our past ones throughout the throughout the month on our social media channels. Um, upcoming, I, again, I would just stay, I'm trying to keep it short. So uh, follow <laughs> us to see the, the upcoming, some of our athlete um, engagements over the next few months. Um, we'll do some streaming there. Um, in terms of in-person though, we're having um, our uh, Play for Good. Um, it's our, our fundraising and sort of connection event um, in the DMV area in um, September. Um, we're honoring Katie Ledecky um, she will be virtually introduced by Stephen Curry, um, who could awesome. be an NBA champion by that time. Who knows? Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's what's that going on. So exciting. So that's going to be a hybrid event, like in person, but also virtual. Component. Mostly in person. Um, there may, we cool. may be, we may connect some, um, some virtual elements, but, um, we're excited to, to hopefully be in person for the first time since the pandemic started. So fingers crossed. That's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, James, last but not least, tell us what's going on. Where can we find you? Yeah, so I'm working on a collaboration right now with an organization called 361 Firm, which is a network of uh, family office and investment professionals. They have an event coming up in Ohio, and we're looking to uh, we're creating a grant program for some of the black parentpreneurs in our community who will live in Ohio to get them some money and get them some additional exposure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Father's Day is coming up. So we're going to be doing another round of grants for some of the dadpreneurs in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone out there who has a heart for the work we're doing to empower black parentpreneurs so they can leave a legacy for their beautiful black children, please visit parentpreneurfoundation.org and make a donation. It's tax deductible. Every penny helps, and we are really making a difference for the, the folks in our community, and uh, we appreciate your support. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. All right, that flew by. Thank you so much, panelists, for taking the time um, and sharing your expertise and your your experience with me. It's been such a, such a pleasure and an honor to speak with each of you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to welcome Trevor back on the screen and say goodbye to our panelists, and we're going to move into the giveaway. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I uh, I wish that we could just keep hearing everybody talk because that's been great. I but know. Yes, let's move on to our giveaway. So everyone watching who wishes to enter the giveaway, please comment hashtag SY showcase to be considered. Again, hashtag SY showcase. Get it we'll in give there. Give you a couple minutes to do so. Yep, get it in there. Start commenting. Fill the comments. Um, while you do, we will have two winners who will win a Streamyard water bottle and a Streamyard hoodie, which are so comfortable, right, Kelsey? Yes, they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our swag is the best. If you don't yeah. have Streamyard swag yet, definitely. Even if you do, enter the giveaway. Yeah. For get your more. chance to win. Yeah, yeah. Get more. While you comment and fill the, the stage chat, um, feel free to check out our StreamYard community Facebook group if you haven't already joined. Okay, what do you think, Kelsey? Should we go ahead and get started? I don't know. It looks like six entries, okay. nine entries only. Let's okay. give it a couple more seconds. I know we're okay. one minute out, but I want to give everyone a chance to enter. Yeah. Oh, okay. The numbers are going up. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can get up to 20. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> 16. Get while, them in there, everyone. Yeah. While you do, the recording of this event will be shared via email this week. Um, and All right, yeah. let's draw. Let's, let's do, do it. it. OK, let's kick it off. Drum roll. Yay. Oh, Congrats, Congrats, Elizabeth. Yay. That's okay. fabulous. I know. So in order to claim your swag, Elizabeth, just email the StreamYard support team, contact at StreamYard.com, and we'll be able to facilitate getting your address and getting your sizing information and all of that to send you your awesome swag. Yep. Okay, let's do all one right. more. Let's draw again. Yep. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Karina. Yes, congratulations. Wow. Amazing. Congrats, okay. Karitha. Elizabeth says, woo, I never thought, oops, I never thought I would win. Thank you. <laughs> well, today's your lucky day, Elizabeth. Don't yeah. forget to reach out to us and Karitha as well. Yeah. Um, contact at StreamYard.com. We'll get you hooked up. 
Thank you everyone so much for tuning in and joining this amazing showcase. And a special thank you to our speakers for sharing their insights today. And a special thank you to Tyler for our sign language interpretation. Thank you so much. Enjoy networking with fellow live streamers. You can get to this by clicking the people icon on the left of your screen and see you all again. Bye everyone. Bye.